So here I've got a 6XP amplifier and the complaint with this one is that one of the speaker outputs on the right hand side is not working. Um, and that's a bit odd because these uh, connectors they're just connected in parallel inside the unit um, and it's really just giving you connectors so you can uh, buy wire your loudspeakers and if we look at the DMM you know I've got the I've got the DMM connected to the other channel on both ground connections and it shows zero ohms that's that's what we expect we also expect zero ohms between the the ground of the two channels um, and if I put it in that port, that's indeed the case. We see zero ohms there, so that's quite good. Um, if I go and put it into the other port, however, uh, it's open circuit, um, and so there must be some must be some disconnect inside. If I move both probes over there, we still see the same thing. It's open circuit there. Um, so there's some some basically a broken trace inside there that we need to fix. Probably doesn't even merit a video, but uh, I've never been inside a 6XP before, so we'll have a sort of mini tear down here, we'll have a wee look inside and see exactly what's gone wrong with this uh, broken connection here. So here we are inside this uh, 6XP, and uh, it's a bit different from some of the other amplifiers in that it's got this additional board here. Um, and this uh, is for the headphones in this case, and uh, some of the sort of higher option units have got other inputs there, there'll be other digital inputs there. Um, so that's got to come out. First thing I see is the solder joints there are a bit kind of uh, less than ideal, but anyway. So uh, we just need to remove a headphone uh, a nut from the back and then there's a connector on the board that allows us to lift this off. And uh, just turn that over. So, as I say, this is just their headphone amplifier. We've got a little power supply here and then it's just an op-amp drive out to the headphone. And then when we look on the main board, it's, this is it's very similar to the uh, Cyrus 6. Um, I suppose the big difference on the board is that we've got two input selector uh, devices and that's um, for the second zone. Um, you know, one of the, one of the uh, input selectors deals with this amplifier, and then the the other one uh, there's an output on the back. You can send that to a second amplifier for in another room, and uh, you know they talk about the second zone uh, functionality for that. The other thing we see is we've got a a, a five volt standby power supply here. A nice little transformer on the board there. And that that is for uh, sort of modern regulations, I think. Um, as I understand it, modern uh, amplifiers or any kind of electronic equipment needs to have less than one watt standby power. So they use a very low power uh, supply uh, just to keep the thing uh, uh, in standby. And then when you when you switch on the main unit, this really kicks in here and uh, switches on the main transformer. Uh, so other circuitry is very similar. I can see a bunch of the power supply stuff is pretty much the same. Um, and then we've got our plus and minus 15s here. And I, I notice the usual thing here where the electrolytic capacitors, they're, they're angled towards the heat sink. Um, you know, they're, or, they're, or they're jammed up against the heat sink. And this, this in my mind, is an intentional um, built-in failure mechanism over time, you know, because these these capacitors are just going to um, uh, get hot and uh, that just uh, kills their kills their lifespan. So whenever I see this, I just go in and move the, move the capacitor away um, and uh, just give it the best chance there. I have checked the yes, are these and they're okay at this stage, but uh, in time they would have failed before any other ones in the unit. Um, so I suppose the next thing is we need to get the board out and we'll find out uh, where the the, the uh, open circuit is between these two connectors. Um, I, can, I can actually see it down here, but that won't show up in the camera. Um, so we'll have to lift this board out, and uh, I'll probably take a few close-up shots to show what's happening there. So here we are, zoomed in in the, the area uh, of interest here, and these uh, gold uh, sections. These are, these are the pins for the the uh, 
uh, ground connector and uh, these should be joined together and you can see on the PCB here where there's an outline where there should be a trace but it, it's just absent um, and then there should be uh, evidence of the via around this pin and you can see there's no via and there's, the solder there is joined to nothing um, so uh, this uh, it's very hard to explain why this thing is missing um, uh, we'll never really know what's happened there we also see the kind of horrible solder joint here um, so there's something something gone wrong I would suspect in the production of this board um, you know it's not even the, the the trace is there but it's burnt or or cracked or something it's just completely missing so there's been some kind of physical damage done to this at some point in time anyway we'll we'll just uh, join these two pins together on the other underside of the board <clears throat> uh, one other area I found interesting I've, I've not done a very good job of focusing this picture but uh, this is the other connector uh, the, just the positive side and you can see it, it's crooked um, in relation to the PCB uh, there shouldn't be this uh, angled gap here that, that should be flush on the board uh, and you know there's some stress going on here this is just not how it should be um, so it kind of just says again something's gone wrong in the production of this board just in this area um, so uh, as I say, we'll, we'll just go ahead and join these two pins together on the underside and that should solve our problem. Here we are then, we're just going to bridge these uh, two connector pins on the underside of the board and that should solve our problem. Um, I actually when I was cleaning the joints up there, uh, some of the lands were just coming off the board so it's really had some uh, stress or damage in here at some point in time um, looks like you know from the fact that that connector wasn't um, flush to the board you know there's just been some stress in the production of this one and uh, it's uh, just taken a little while to show itself as being a problem Anyway, that uh, should give us a good, good, strong connection now. We shouldn't have any more problems with that. I'm going to do, go and do the other side as well because uh, it doesn't look too clever. That's us then. I've done both joints now, so that should be solid. Uh, shouldn't be any problems with that. So we'll get the, get the main board in uh, and uh, we'll just do a quick check before we put all the final covers on. Uh, there's a bunch of screws and stuff to go in here before we put this board in so uh, I'll just pause at that point. So I've got the amp back together now and we'll just do a quick check before we finish up. So I've got the speakers in the, this is the port that was working before so if we uh, turn the volume up that should be fine and then we'll swap them over to the other port should also be fine. Thank you. 